With 58 mountains over 14,000 feet and over 100,000 miles of unpaved roads, Colorado is a mountain lover's and overlander's dream. In this video, I'm going to cover five of my favorite overland trails or unpaved roads in Colorado. I'll have full tracks available to my Patreon subscribers and will describe the route and vehicle requirements in this video. For every trail on this list, I recommend having at least all-terrain tires for the sharp rocks and low range to give you climbing power and engine braking. A skilled driver can probably do all of the trails with an all-wheel drive vehicle, but it's safer and easier with low range. Ultimately, you are responsible for your safety and your vehicle, and you drive these trails at your own risk. Colorado, in particular, has very seasonal trails. Some of the mountain roads might not be open until as late as July, and it's not unusual to see the first snow on them by September. Late July and August are definitely the most popular time of year for people to drive the trails, but the last week of September to the first week of October is my favorite time since you get the incredible fall colors and you avoid the crowds. Just be aware that you might get unlucky with snow and many of these trails could be closed for the year. If you enjoy this list, definitely subscribe to the channel and check out some of the Colorado adventure videos that I've linked in the description. In fifth place is Stony Pass. At 12,492 feet, this is one of the lesser known, underrated mountain passes in Colorado's San Juan Mountains. Coming from the east, you start by passing the Rio Grande Reservoir before slowly climbing along the Rio Grande Valley. Along the way are multiple beautiful campsites in the Rio Grande National Forest. While most of the road is easy and smooth, there are a few sections that are rocky and bumpy. Stock SUVs and trucks should be able to do this road, although I've heard reports that some parts have become a little rougher in the last year. There are a couple of detours on the route that will turn it into an all-day trip. Kite Lake is halfway between the reservoir and the pass, and the Buffalo Boy Mine is just to the west of the pass. At the top, there are fantastic views of the mountains, and it's down a series of switchbacks that bring you out close to the town of Silverton. A short drive east of Stony Pass is the town of Creed, which is the starting point for the Bachelor Loop. The loop is a little different from the other roads on this list in that it's not about Grand Mountain views, although there are some cool sights, but instead it focuses on the history of the area. The 17 mile trail starts at the north end of Creed where you immediately enter a steep sided valley with impressive cliffs towering either side of you. A short distance up you pass one of my favorite sites in the area, the huge Commodore Mill. From there it climbs the valley and loops around to the east, passing the Bachelor Town site and a bunch more mines, including the Last Chance Mine which is open to visitors during summer months. The official loop has some steep climbs out of Creed, but it's actually possible to do this in a two-wheel drive car if you do it in reverse and you're very careful. There are also multiple side trips that can be used to extend the loop, but four-wheel drive is definitely preferred for those. Even further east is number three on this list, Menlo Pass. My favorite way to do this trail is to start on the east side near Gardner. You start by driving up the mountain through the San Isabel National Forest where you'll climb a few steep grades that will require four-wheel drive. At the top of the pass you enter the Great Sand Dunes National Preserve and this is where it starts to get scenic as you drop down the Medno Creek Canyon with mountains on either side of you. Between the pass and the national park there are also 21 campsites to choose from that are all free and are first come first serve. There are nine creek crossings as you descend, and these can often be deep, especially in the late spring, so it's worth checking the National Park website for the current conditions. As you approach the bottom of the valley, the enormous sand dunes of Great Sand Dunes National Park come into view. In the summer, the sand on the trail can be very soft. If you're aired down and in four low, you shouldn't have any problems. It's worth mentioning that coming this way gives you the coolest views of the dunes, but it also allows you to use the air station near the National Park campground that will air up your tires really quickly. Engineer Pass is the first unpaved mountain pass I ever drove, so it had to be on this list. The pass connects Lake City to the Million Dollar Highway between Silverton and Uray, and it has multiple route options and several cool sites along the way. From Lake City, the climb up the mountain is relatively easy with a couple of mild switchbacks. 
As you get to the top, you have incredible views of the rugged mountains in every direction. You then go around the mountain and down a few more tighter switchbacks. There are a few sections of rougher road as you descend, but nothing that a stock forerunner with good tires or another similar truck or SUV couldn't handle. The official engineer pass route crosses the mountain, then heads down via Mineral Creek, where you traverse some of the coolest cliffs in the area. This is probably the roughest way across the pass, and the only option where having a lifted vehicle would help significantly. Another option takes you past the ghost town of Animus Forks, then past the Frisco Mill, over California and Hurricane Pass, then down Corkscrew Pass. I don't have a lot of footage of it, but it has some very steep descents around tight switchbacks that will require at least a three-point turn. The final choice is to head down to Silverton from Animus Forks. This is the easiest route, and I've seen minivans do it. Just because it's easy doesn't mean that you should dismiss it though. The drive down the valley has some incredible views, and Silverton is a neat little town. My number one trail in Colorado is Imogene Pass. At 13,114 feet, it's also the highest pass on this list, and the second highest pass open to vehicles in the US. Only Mosquito Pass is higher, but it lacks some of the appeal of Imogene Pass. The road to Imogene Pass starts just south of Uray, which is definitely worth a visit in itself. As you head out along Camp Bird Road, you can take a shortcut on the left through Camp Bird, but I recommend going a little further and doubling back. This road is one of the more technical on the list, and while it is doable in a stock 4Runner, you're going to have a better time in something that's lifted for a little more clearance. There are a few spots that are slightly off camber, and as you cross the final shelf road to the pass, there are some very steep drop-offs. The thing I like most about Imogene Pass is the scenery. This has got to be one of the prettiest trails in Colorado, and it changes as you cross the mountain. Coming down the far side towards Telluride, you get incredible views along the valley before passing along another very steep shelf road. Eventually, you end up in Telluride, where you can continue exploring other mountain passes like Last Dollar or Ophir Pass. Of course, no list is complete without a bonus mention, and this time, there are actually five for you. Matt from Ozark Overland Adventures has compiled his own list of his top five trails in Colorado, and they are very different from mine. I'll put a link in the description so you can go see his video. Thanks for watching.